happy Tuesday. Um, I am so thrilled and honored and excited to be here. I have so much work on my desk. I just can't even believe it. It's a little overwhelming, but it's all good. So you guys, I would love to hear what you're all doing this summer. I hope you're out, you know, like having sex out in the forest and all that stuff. Um, welcome to my Zoom call. And if you're listening to this fabulous session on podcast, welcome to my podcast, Let Go with Lucinda. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will, because you know, honest to God, it's such great advice and it's free. And I kind of think that I have a different twist on things. And I think it's a really good one. And I don't give you any crap. I'm going to try really hard not to cuss, but that's so hard. And it's not fair because everybody else on all these freaking podcasts, they get to cuss. Okay, throw you. Hi, Charles. Hi, hi. I don't. Hi, Lucinda. Who's this? Cami. Hi, everybody. Hi, Eugenia. Hi, Stan. Oh, the art of the the name of the artwork elephant elephant behind you is unstoppable. Oh, that's so beautiful. Wow, I love that. That's amazing. You guys are so amazing. Have I told you lately that I love you? Oh, wait, isn't that a song? Anyway. <laughs> Listen, I've read this amazing book. I want to share it with you. Oh, look at that pretty woman. Oh, wait a minute. That's me. <laughs> so I'm here tonight to talk about all kinds of great things, but mostly negative people. And, and I, you know, I mean, and look, maybe you're a negative person and you don't know it. Maybe you have a negative daughter or a negative son or a negative best friend and you don't know it. Maybe you do know it. Maybe p- people put you down and make you feel small. Maybe you feel small. Maybe you're one of those people that hangs out in, you know, the poor me syndrome. Maybe you wonder why you're not getting what you want and why life isn't happening the way you want and why nobody's falling in love with you or, you know, why aren't you happy? Why can't you just freaking be happy? And, and so all of this is something, hi, Patrice, hi. This is all part of that down negative energy that some people can't shake. And, and, and you know, and I, I know we talked about this once before, but I wanted to bring it back because I've been doing a lot of coaching because everybody's freaking out about the Delta variant. And, you know, there's a lot of information there. I want to share a little bit of it with you. Listen, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on this Zoom call. But I'll share what I do know and I'll share what, you know, what, what I think, you know, already. And that is that the anti-vaxxers are the people that are spreading this variant, unfortunately. And, and everybody's got the right to not take a vaccine, but um, what happens is then they get infected and then they can spread it to people who have been vaccinated. And yes, everybody's saying, well, but if you get it and you're vaccinated, your chances of getting really sick are pretty small. And that's true. And, you know, I'm not a doctor, but by, based on what I'm hearing, what I'm reading, and I'm reading a lot, um, you know, unfortunately, though, the Delta variant is about 40 to 60 times more transmiss- transmissible. And so um, you are more likely to get it in an elevator or even out to dinner Or if you're sitting at a table with a bunch of friends and one of them isn't vaccinated, or maybe one of them is vaccinated and they got infected. And now they're going to, the problem is, and people say, well, there's so much confusion around this. It's like, well, if I'm vaccinated, am I not able to get this? No, you can still get it because this is extremely transmissible. What does that mean? It means it's 60 times more transmissible through breathing the air. So if you're in an elevator with someone or you're sitting at a table with someone or you're in a closed in space, maybe not even a closed in space, your chances of getting it, whether you're vaccinated or not, are still out there. Now, your chances of getting it if you're vaccinated aren't quite as high, but the truth of the matter is you can still get it. So if you're someone sitting there thinking, gee, I'm vaccinated, I'm not gonna get it, that's absolutely not true. So then now here we all are, Hi, God, you guys, I'm so glad you're all here. I I love you all so much. Keep the text coming. I'm going to try to read them all. Um, My BFF is fully vaccinated and has COVID and is very sick. And that's what I'm getting to. Thank you so much. Jump in there, share. I love it when you guys share. So a really, really good friend of mine, fully vaccinated, and her sister was not vaccinated and she just got COVID. Um, from, from what I'm hearing and seeing from people who are getting COVID, who've been vaccinated, they're not getting significantly sick. In other words, um, they're not going to end up in the hospital. That's probably not likely, but you could still get symptoms and you could still have a sore throat. You could still have a cough. You could still feel crappy. I'm going to try really hard not to cuss you guys. It's so hard for me. Ah! 
But here's the thing. Please know that more than likely, okay, whoever you are, let's just clear some things up. Whether you've been vaccinated or not, you can get this Delta variant um, you virus. And, and if you are vaccinated, your chances of getting it are less, but it's still very high because this is such a transmissible virus. That said, if you get it, you probably won't get as sick as someone who isn't vaccinated. But what it does kind of do is it gives you those anti-vaxxers, um, it gives you a real substantial reason to get vaccinated because if you're not vaccinated and you get this Delta virus, you could die. And, and if anybody tells you that's not true, they're lying to you. And I think what I'm seeing on TV is these profile, I'm watching these profiles of people who didn't get vaccinated and they're in the hospital dying of this, vac, vac, this um, um, variant. And they're saying, please get vaccinated. So I'm trying to understand why people wouldn't get vaccinated at this point when the danger of ending up in the hospital if you're 30 or 40 or 70 with um, COVID is, you know, is it's, it's still a significant danger. In fact, there are hospitals that are full now with COVID patients, many of them in their 30s and 40s. So um, the argument is not, you know, hey, go out and get vaccinated. Although if I, I know I don't lie to people and I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. I want to be honest and direct. I think we owe it to each other and ourselves to get vaccinated, especially if you're a parent. I know, and listen, I know all the reasons people don't want to get vaccinated. They're, they're afraid. There's not enough information on this. If, you know, they don't know the long-term effects. And then you hear crazy things about people with side effects from the vaccine. And the, the, problem, the problem is right now, we live in a time in the world where there's so much information, it's almost too much information. And a lot of people think, oh, it's political. At this point, you know, it's hard to believe. It's hard to know who's telling you what and why. And, you know, we have people like Fauci, you know, being questioned about stuff. I mean, so we're all sitting there going, well, what should we do? And I'm here to tell you, it's a personal decision you have to make. I'm vaccinated. Now we're all sitting here with plane tickets to places like Europe, right? And we're trying to decide if it's safe to be on a plane for 14 hours. So it's a really tough situation please feel free to jump in and ask me questions. Again, I'm not a doctor, but what I will tell you is that this thing's probably going to mutate a few more times and eventually they're going to have to have a vaccine every year and it's going to have to cover all these different mutations. And until then, you know, this can make you very sick. And yes, you can, you can still get this, this virus if you're vaccinated. That's what really sucks. So what does this mean? It, for us in Los Angeles, it means that we're still wearing masks when we walk into a restaurant, um, but when we get into the restaurant, we can take them off. It's really kind of stupid, actually, because you can still totally get the, the virus. Um, people are being cautious. I, there are a lot of stores here that say you have to have a mask on to enter the store. And there are some hair salons, there are people are masked, some aren't. I think it's almost become this thing where it's your, it's up to you to make a decision. And now poor LA Unified, you know, they're trying to go back to school and if I were a parent of a 10 year old, I don't know that I would want them going to a public school um, with this Delta variant floating around everywhere. And it's so highly contagious. That's what you've got to realize about this guys is that this particular virus is so much more transmissible than the one before it. And so your likelihood of catching it in any situation is much greater vaccinated or not. It's less likely if you're vaccinated, but as I'm sure all of you have seen, and I have seen as well, a lot of people that we know that are vaccinated are getting the virus. So um, proceed with caution, I would say to you, and know that this is a transitional time we're going through. And once again, I, th I think what's really, it's, 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 it's upsetting and frustrating because like I said, I have a trip planned with my fiance. We're gonna be on a plane for a while. And we've both been vaccinated, but you're like, should we go? So we're looking at the places we're going and we're trying to see what are they doing there and how safe is it over there? And we're gonna make a decision. I can't make your decision. You've got to make those decisions. Uh, but surely and certainly if you've got compromised health issues or if you're pregnant or, you know, anything, if of, of a certain age, you know, you may want to say, mm, I don't know if I want to get on a plane right now. That's your decision. There, there are those who would argue that the, 
the air in planes is more pure than the air in an operating room. So I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but um, I know one thing. I'm, you know, well, what are you doing, Lucinda? Well, I will tell you this. I am not, I'm not writing. I'm not going in elevators where there are people. I'm trying to avoid elevators and I'm trying to make decisions where I'm not in big crowds of people. You know, like they're opening big concerts out here in LA. So these people are going to be in environments where they're going to be breathing a lot of other people's oxygen. And that's how this, this virus is transmitted. It's through the air and it's highly, highly infectious. So, so I'm here tonight to help you go through the week with a better attitude. (laughs) Okay. Because, you know, so much of how we feel every day is whether or not we choose to have, you know, um, a good attitude and a good frame of mind, or we want to go into this with a toxic attitude and have a negative downer attitude. How many people in your life are downers? You know, um, I want to start out with some things in my book because I want you to think about this. I want to start out with, I love that I, in every chapter of this book, book, I, I end the chapter with some positive little, you know, piece that I wrote. You are in control of yourself and your thoughts. You have chosen to free yourself of all destructive, negative thoughts and doubts. You are the master of your thoughts, no matter what they are. You know that you don't have to give them any power. You are learning to trust the universe and the process of life. You're releasing your need to control everything, including your thoughts. They're just thoughts. You are safe, strong, and protected from anything that stops you from feeling good. You know that your thoughts come from a lack of knowledge, a feeling of insecurity, and a lack of trust that the universe has your back. Discovering and challenging your negative thoughts will boost your energy rather than drain you. You can relax in the knowledge that you can handle whatever thoughts happen to show up in your brain because you can choose to not pay any attention to them and say, "Eh, you know what, that's just a thought. You can let go and trust that life is happening exactly as it's supposed to right now for whatever reason it is and that you're supposed to be learning something from it. You need to simply relax and trust and let life unfold. You are a powerful, loving being, and you know that you can take care of yourself. When you feel anxious or scared, you realize, you know what? This is just a reaction to one of my stupid, scary thoughts. Each day, you courageously expand your comfort zone by inviting confidence, strength, and empowering thoughts into your life. You find value in challenging your thoughts. You choose to dissipate those negative thoughts by focusing on a world where anything is possible. So we're here to talk about power thinking tonight. Um, The man who has no imagination or takes no risks has no wings. And I don't know about you, but Man, I want to fly. I want to get out there and live life fully. I want to get out there and go see the world. I've you know that's have you ever been to Spain? (laughs) Well, I kind of like the music. Well, I've never been to Greece and I've never been to Asia and I've never been to Australia. And I want to go to all these places. You guys come with me. I'm going to start doing retreats. And I'm going to take you guys on African safaris and I'm going to take you to Asia and we're going to go see, you know, some spiritual place in Asia and we're going to meditate and I'm, we're going to learn about the universe and we're going to learn about why life is such a gift and how we need to send each other this positive energy and empower each other. You think I'm joking. I hope I do get to do that in the near future. Um, so I am Lucinda Bassett. If you have not been following me on my podcast Um, I hope you do. It's let go with Lucinda. It's on every podcast platform. And I think it's a really fabulous thing. And I wanted Eugene. Yeah, that would be amazing. Wouldn't it? Ken, Ken. Oh yes. Oh, oh, Danny. Is that, um, yes. Ken was fabulous in our program. And I wanted to tell all of you that we, I'm getting all these messages for those of you that are on the podcast. I'm doing a zoom call right now. And I have a million people on here giving me fabulous information and messages. And I love that. And we are creating a new program. You know, the attacking anxiety and depression program is about 37 years old. 
<laughs> and uh, so we're creating a new program and I've got all these fabulous creative people working with me on it. And it's going to be called From Panic to Power the Solution. And it's going to incorporate a lot of fabulous new skills, the things I'm teaching you now and breath work and, and empowering um, positive psychology. And I'm really excited about it. So I hope you guys will participate. I have made this promise to those of you who are on my Zoom call. If you could please um, email us with your email, um, I'm going to give all of you a free program, a free copy of this new program. And it's about a $300 value when it comes out. So you're saying, well, how do I email you, Lucinda? Um, well, I'm going to give you Darla's email, which I think I, I should try and Darla, put your email up for me because I know you've got a million of them. And you can email Darla with your email and we're going to send you guys, all of you on this Zoom call, a free copy of the new program. We're hoping to have it done by November and it's going to have a lot of um, live video feed and forums where you can talk to each other, um, free breathwork sessions from me. It's going to have access to my personal Lucinda Bassett Life coaches and all new content that you can take with you on your phone and breathwork. Um, so Darla's email is Darla, D-A-R-L-A dot Van Horn, V-A-N-H-O-R-N at gmail.com. If you want to email Darla at Darla, D-A-R-L-A dot Van Horn, V-A-N-H-O-R-N at gmail.com um, and leave her your email. I guarantee you when we get the new program finished, you're going to get a free copy. And you're going to love it. It's going to be life-changing. It's, I think what I'm excited about is obviously, you know, so much has happened in 38 years, the attacking anxiety and depression program, obviously is still available on Amazon, but it's outdated. And we've learned so much more since then, even what we're talking about now, which, which is power thinking, power thinking is very, very different than positive thinking, you know, and there's a whole new realm uh, yes, new. It's a new, going to be a brand new program. And there's a whole new, um, I want to say, um, modality of healing called positive psychology, which I've been told over and over and again that, I, that I, I was ahead of the curve here because that's what I do. I want to teach people and, and help people understand that just because you're negative doesn't mean you're a bad person. Just because you're anxious doesn't mean you're not full of potential. Just because you're a worrier doesn't mean you can't do something incredible with all that creative energy. In fact, you are exactly what you're supposed to be right now to make all of your dreams a reality. You just need, you know, someone to help you understand that what's, again, what I said, I think I said this last week, what's wrong with you is what's right with you. I love that, you know, all that, that worry and that overthinking and overanalyzing is what makes you perfect to write a book or create a television show or do your own podcast. Oh my God, there are 1.6 million podcasts out there. One of them could be you. All right, so what is a, what is a um, disempowered thinker? Well, they tell themselves they're not enough. We talked uh, on the last podcast about, I'm not enough. Yes, you are. You're more than enough, okay? I'm too much. That's my problem. <laughs> But I'm, I like that I'm too much, you know, I'm a handful, I'm a piece of work, <laughs> you know, I fill up the room with my energy and that's all a good thing. All right. Um, so disempowering thinkers tell themselves they're not enough. They're not clear about what they want. They don't value themselves. They don't accept their, their challenges as opportunities for um, possibilities um, they feel they're inferior and they don't have, they fear they're talentless. They are really a fear of failure. Disempowered thinkers see themselves as victims, which is, it's, it's not, listen, and this isn't to make you feel bad. I want you to say, oh my God, that's me. That's me. Or, oh, that's not me. And maybe you're some of these, these things, but not all of these things. Disempowered thinkers fear change and they tend to hang on what feels safe and familiar. Um, sometimes they view themselves as powerless. Um, sometimes they allow their fear to prevent them from taking risks. Sometimes they feel hopeless and limited, and they even talk themselves down. Disempowered um, thinkers can beat themselves up. 
they can um, feel they have nothing to contribute in a conversation or in a social environment or even in a relationship. Sometimes they sit around and indulge in negative projections about themselves. Like, what if this happens? What if this happens? No, what if nobody loves me? Sometimes they have deep regrets and obsess. You know, if only I would have done this, if only I would have done that differently. Um, they procrastinate. Sometimes disempowered thinkers have a hard time committing to things because they feel like they don't deserve to be happy. They don't deserve to be loved. Sometimes they feel that they've lost hope. Um, they don't trust their intuition. Sometimes and this is, they envy other people because they don't believe that anybody really believes in them. They feel very alone and they don't believe in miracles. And you could say, oh my gosh, that's me. And if I say, and if it is you, God bless you, because guess what? I'm going to tell you tonight how to turn that around. Because here's the biggest thing I want to tell you is the disempowered thinker thinkers often don't even know they're disempowered thinkers. So how can you possibly go, oh, I need to work on that when you don't even know that that's what you are. And, and it's not your fault. In fact, I want to challenge you to see and hear me tonight that if you're a disempowered thinker, you have the potential to be an empowered thinker. You have the potential to be a power thinker. Okay. And that's what I am. And I grew up a very disempowered thinker. And, and let's talk for a minute about why you grew up to be a disempowered thinker. Maybe you grew up with a father or mother that always said, you know what? You can't have that. You can't do that. You're not enough. You're not smart enough. We don't have any money. We live on the wrong side of the tracks. I don't know who you think you are. You're not as good as they are. I grew up with that. So I grew up thinking, you, that's how you're supposed to think. And yet there's this little light in me, you know, <laughs> I love that song. Don't let anyone it out. This little light of mine, I'm going to make it shine. Well, and I know it's stupid and you know, I'm a little goofy, <laughs> but that's why you love me. This little light of mine, I'm going to make it shine, make it shine, make it shine, make it shine. And I used to go to this church camp on the lake in Ohio, and I remember singing that song. And then it was, don't let anyone it out. I'm going to make it shine. And it's funny how it stuck with me growing up as a teenager. And, you know, I was a little chunky and I looked a little ethnic. I didn't know if I was Indian or Hispanic because my father was adopted and I had really big lips that were about the size of my head. <laughs> this is true. This is a true story. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I felt like I just, I was always scared. And I, I grew up thinking I'm poor and I'm not attractive. I don't, you know, I, I don't know who I am. I have, my lips are too big. And, and yet I remember that song from church camp don't let anyone blow it out. You know, you're going to make it shine. And so back when I was seven or eight years old, I had this little spark of a candle of, of a light of a flicker of light that said, Hey, Cindy, my, my name was Cindy Reddick. Okay. I'm telling you that was my name, Red Dick. How would you like to go with that name? <laughs> it's enough to make anybody feel disempowered <laughs> anyway. So, um, Oh my God, you guys, I'm so glad you're all here. You guys, all these names, you all these, I love you all so much. And I'm so honored that you're showing up with me on a beautiful Tuesday, wherever you're at. But anyway, my point is think back. I want you all to take a moment now and breathe and think back of a time in your life when you were 10 years old, 12 years old. And what was the light? You know, what was the light? And I don't care. Maybe you grew up in a perfect family, or maybe you grew up with an abusive alcoholic parent, or maybe your mom took Valium, or maybe your mom and dad split up. Maybe you grew up with, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe a grandpa raised you, you know, but somewhere along this light of this line of your lifeline, there was a little light. I'm sorry. I was, I'm reading you. I'm reading all your texts. Keep them coming. They're so beautiful. Um, what your messages, um, Somewhere along your life, there was a light that somebody lit in your heart, and it was probably God in the universe. And I don't want to offend anyone about talking about God, but I do talk about God because I'd be pretty lost if I didn't have a higher self to believe in. And so I do talk about that. But that song for me, as stupid as that was, at that little church camp, 
made me think, wow, there is this little light in me that thinks that maybe someday, someday I could be somebody, you know? And I want you to take a moment and think back when you were 10, 12 years old, what was it you wanted to be? Did you want to be an astronaut? Did you want to be, you know, a veterinarian? Maybe you just want to be a school teacher. Maybe you just wanted to be a mommy. You know, I wanted to, I remember writing my name with a big L, Lucinda, you know, cause that's my real name. And then I didn't have the last name Bassett, but I would just write Lucinda with a big L. And I thought, I don't know what I'm going to be, but someday I'm going to really be able to, I'm going to write my signature on something. And um, lo and behold, you know, I funny, cause I was telling someone this story the other day, you know, when my mom worked at RCA corporation and she brought this coloring book home and, you know, I colored outside the lines and whoever won was going to win a bicycle. We were so poor. I didn't, couldn't have a bicycle. And she came home one day screaming and saying, you won, you won the bicycle. And I won a brand new red bicycle at 13 years old in Finley, Ohio. That was a big deal. And I did it because I drew birds where there weren't birds and I drew mountains where there weren't mountains. <laughs> I thought outside of the lines, I colored outside of the lines. And I do that to this day. And that's what made me come up with this whole idea of power thinking. You, who cares what people say about you? Cut those negative no-sayers out of your life. If someone tells you, you can't do that, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you know what? Don't hang out with them. Go hang out with the people that say, yes, you can. I love being around you. I love your energy. And you got to start by being your own best friend, your own cheerleader. Thinking negatively affects your attitude about your future. It also affects the kind of people you attractive, attract. When you're a power thinker, you're going to attract power thinkers into your life. When you're disempowered, you're going to be the one in the room with your head down and you're going to attract the other people who feel disempowered. You don't want that. You know, I was on a dating site two years ago before I met my fiance and I was amazed at how many people, I love it when they said, I'm a positive person. I have an optimistic attitude. I don't want to meet people who are negative. I love that because I'm a positive person. I have a positive attitude. Don't tell me it can't be done. It, don't, don't tell me it can't be done. Get out of my way. And let me show you. Either help me or get out of my way because I'm going to make sure it gets done. So thinking negatively or disempoweringly, which I really love, and that, that's an important word. What does disempowering mean? You know exactly what it means when you get up and say, I'm tired. I didn't sleep well. I feel like I've gained 10 pounds since COVID. Now we've got another virus. I don't know if I can handle this. Well, there's five negative thoughts and you haven't even gotten your day started. The average person has 250 negative thoughts a day. Think about that. 250, that's a negative thought every two and a half minutes. Now, and you're not average. If you're on this thing, you're probably highly creative and you have a vivid imagination, just like me. And so we probably have 400 negative and you don't even realize it. Like, oh, you know, my hair looks bad or I, I feel fat or it looks like I don't have a shirt on. And I do. <laughs> that's not really a negative thought. But anyway. All right. So disempowering thinking will affect the kind of people that you draw into your life. It will also affect the opportunities that you draw into your life. So changing the way you think to a power thinker, I promise you this, you guys, write this down. Becoming a power thinker will be the most important empowering skill you can acquire in a lifetime and the most important and empowering skill you can teach your children. If you can teach your children how to be optimistic, hopeful, and how to think of a place of empowerment, it can change the whole family dynamic as well as your children's future. I, I tell you, I'm telling you, one of the most important tasks I have when I coach people is helping, helping them to understand the importance of empowerment thinking, power thinking, power, power, power. And you're like, well, how do I know what's what? When you have a thought, say, did that just de-energize me or energize me? Did that just disempower me 
or empower me? Did that just give me confidence or make me feel insecure? And if the answer is, it made me feel insecure, it made me feel disempowered, then get rid of it. Let go of it. Replace it. How can I empower myself so I feel strong and confident and capable capable of everything, capable of anything? How can I empower myself right now so that I know that I'm fabulous, I have good energy, and attract attracts like? I feel good, I'm going to attract good. I feel powerful, therefore I'm going to attract powerful people. And don't be afraid of powerful people. They're fun. They're going places. They're making life happen. And you don't have to be beautiful and you don't have to be skinny and you don't have to be wealthy. You just have to be powerful. I was powerful from the age five because I was the youngest in my family and I had such a dysfunctional family. It was my job to go around and make everybody else feel powerful. (laughs) And I didn't know what I was doing back then, but I, I just knew that it felt a lot better to go around and make people feel good than to make people feel bad. Do you have anybody in your life that likes to make people feel small? They suck, okay? And if you're one of them, don't be that person. I have people in my life that try to make me feel small. I don't like their energy. And I'm like, why do you want to make someone feel small? Why do you want to make someone feel bad? Because they are happy. Because they have energy. Because they're in a good mood. You ever know those people? They start telling you, you're talking too loud, or you make too much noise, or you're too, how about this one? You're too happy. (laughs) You're too happy. How can you be too happy? I mean, if you're on Coke or something, I get that could maybe be the case. Oh, read this. Writer C.S. Lewis wrote, friendship is born in that moment when one person says to another, what, you two? I thought I was the only one. I love that. I love that. That's brilliant. You know, have you ever noticed that when you go to a party and you walk into a room room, and if you're in a really good mood and you're up, people gravitate toward you. They want, and I'm not talking you're manic and you're intense and you're, you're drunk. Okay. We're talking that you walk into a room and you just have great energy and you're happy to be there and you're in a good mood. People are drawn to you. You ever notice when you go to a party and you're sitting back in the corner and you're all kind of down and you're kind of hunched over and you're not feeling particularly good about yourself, people avoid you. They kind of stay away from you. Well, that's life. That's life energy. It's a life source. And what I want you to get to embrace today is power thinking. So what is a power thinker? Power thinkers. Oh my God. For one thing, they attract like, like attracts like power thinkers draw you to them. They, they emote good energy. They make you want to be around them. They're addictive. You want to be in their space. Power thinkers feel worthy and deserving. They have a sense of purpose and usually a clear vision about their future. They love, accept, and value themselves. Power thinkers believe that they have unique gifts. They believe in themselves. They give themselves permission to not be perfect. They give themselves permission to failure, always reaffirming and reframing that failure is a learning experience. Power thinkers don't demean themselves or degrade themselves. Um, power, power thinkers express their full range of emotions in healthy and appropriate ways. That's very important. Power thinkers don't put other people down. Power thinkers see the good in most people. Power thinkers take risks and find risks challenging and fun. Power thinkers are optimistic and enthusiastic. They think and speak and act with dignity at all times. They celebrate their accomplishments, no matter how small. They don't hang on to blame and resentment and regret. They're compassionate people to themselves and others. They see themselves as open. They don't waste time focusing on woulda, coulda, shoulda. And by the way, you're not always a power thinker. I'm a power thinker, but I get stuck a little bit sometimes on some of these things. But for the most part, 
I'm 80% in the power thinker energy. They stay calm and centered. They refrain from indulging in negative projections. They are inspiring and inspired by others instead of envious. They're motivated and get up excited about life. Powered thinkers accept that pain, change, and loss are a part of life. And they ask themselves, what can I learn from this? And how can I allow myself to go through depression, to go through grief and come, come out of it more grateful for my own life? Power thinkers are productive, effective, and decisive. They know what they want and they recognize what works for them and what doesn't in the way of opportunities and even people that they hang out with. Power thinkers aren't afraid to ask for support. Power thinkers know they deserve to be happy. They're inspired by other people's accomplishments, not intimidated or envious of them. Power thinkers know that self-worth, peace, and happiness come from within. They're self-generated. They know and recognize what they can and cannot control. They know they're not alone in the world and power thinkers are open to the possibility of miracles in their lives. Now, I'm not suggesting that you're always going to be cheerful and optimistic and, you know, like a perpetual Pollyanna state with a fake smile on your face and, oh, everything's great. We live in a dualistic world filled with opposites and extremes. And we turn on the TV and now the internet and we get daily doses of highs and lows. But we can choose what we tend to spend time on. We can choose whether we're going to be disempowered or empowered. Ask yourself this. Am I looking for what's right about this situation? Am I seeking the lesson that I'm supposed to learn? Or am I looking for what's wrong and why I'm a victim? All I know and all I can guarantee you guys is you're going to find what you're looking for. So if you're looking for an opportunity, if you're looking for a lesson to be learned, if you're looking for how to be a power thinker in any situation, instead of being disempowered, you will find what you're looking for. We all have this incredibly powerful gift that we can use to make ourselves and other people feel strong, safe, loved, secure, understood, and capable. I'm referring to the gift of communication. Our words are one of our most intimate and pure sources of communication. Don't abuse this gift, not to yourself, not to others. It's called compassionate communication. So if you're wondering, you know, what's a power thinker? I just explained it to you. Am I a power thinker? Or am I a disempowered thinker? Well, ask yourself, do I tend to see the negative side of situations? Do I tend to find fault with things easily? Do I tend to um, feel uncomfortable when I feel insecure and go to a negative place? Do I complain a lot? Do people tell me I complain a lot or that I'm negative? Do I have a lot of negative friends? Do I often get my feelings hurt and feel misunderstood? Do I feel uncomfortable around people who are successful? Am I judgmental? Do I feel insecure? Do other people accuse me of being insecure, insensitive, or negative? And if you answered yes to two or more of the above questions, well, there's a good chance that you need to work on being a power thinker. You know, it's, it's hard because people want to um, want there to be a quick fix. And I wish I could say, this is what you do to become a power thinker, but I, I'm gonna give you some steps. So if you wanna write this down, okay? This could be very helpful. Step one, for one week, I'd like you to carry around a little notepad and keep it with you every day and jot, jot down every negative thought you have, including, you know, I feel like I'm a bad mother. I feel like I'm, you know, not affectionate enough to my husband. I feel like I've gained 10 pounds and I'm fat. Okay, and then I want you to write positive, empowering replacement thoughts for every disempowering thought you have. And if you don't know how to do that, ask yourself, what's the exact opposite of this thought? You know, I, I, and, and I would like you to be compassionate to yourself. What would Lucinda 
say to replace this disempowering thought that's making me feel de-energized with something that gives me hope, makes me feel energized, makes me feel like I can get beyond this and anything is possible. So step three, recognize your disempowering thought patterns as exactly that, um, ineffective, ineffective, disempowering, de-energizing thoughts. And it's a habit that you've learned and you need to break it. And it takes practice and it takes unconditional ongoing work at changing the way that you think. And again, you want to be a power thinker because you want that kind of energy in your family, in your relationships, and in your life. Step four, block your negative thoughts. Stop them and replace them with comforting, realistic, empowering thoughts. Okay. You need to change your negative thought patterns and ask yourself, what could I say right now to make myself feel empowered? Okay. Step five, take every opportunity to act in a positive, powerful way toward others. Every action begins with the thought, which creates an idea, which creates an energy, which leads to an action. And this is where I've told you before, before you react or respond to someone else who's being negative or disempowering, take 10 minutes, don't respond. Wait till tomorrow and ask yourself, how can I respond in a way that's, that shows my power? And, that, and by the way, I don't mean aggressive and bitchy. I mean, powerful, confident, and assertive. You always want to come from a place of assertive behavior, not aggressive behavior. Powerful people are not aggressive people. Aggressive people are, you know, they have, um, there are powerful people that can be aggressive, but then they can be narcissistic. And by the way, um, our next Zoom call is going to be about narcissism. And it's one of my favorite topics. Ugh. So if you are a narcissist, you don't know it. <laughs> and if you have a narcissist in your life, don't miss the next Zoom call. Um, narcissists are very, very disturbing people. They're usually very powerful people. They can, they can be actors, they can be politicians, and they are the most charming people and they pull you in and then you are their narcissistic feed. So we'll talk about narcissism next week and it's gonna be a very powerful Zoom session and a very powerful podcast. I hope you'll join me for that. So here are some positive statements, affirmations that you can use that will help you feel powerful and capable versus disempowered. I'm gonna to try to keep them simple so you can write them down. I love life. It's stimulating, exciting, and unpredictable. I love life. I love life. That's okay. Number two, I'm a positive, powerful person with an optimistic future. Number three, I love myself just as I am. Number, number four, I can achieve anything I want. Number five, risks are exciting. Number six, I'm talented. I'm loving and I'm special. Number seven, I can solve problems easily. I am physically strong, healthy, and full of good energy. Number eight. Number nine, I don't let other people's negative energy affect me. I'm going to stay in my power. Number 10. I'm happy in my life right now, and I'm looking forward to the future. 12, I'm sorry, 11. I am calm and content. And then 12, today's a great day full of pleasure and adventure. And if you didn't get all those, email Darla with your email address so you can get a free program and we'll send you those affirmations. Um, so I just had somebody a question. Uh, the next Zoom is a week from today. I'm not sure what that date is, you guys, but it's not next Tuesday. It's the following Tuesday, and it's going to be about narcissists. And it's it's uh, if you want to pick up or if you know a narcissist, you want to read a really great book. It's called a Malignant Self Love, and it is an incredible book about narcissism. Probably it's probably one of the best books I've ever read. 
So we're going to do some breath work now. Um, I want you to go into this breath session asking the universe to, to help you and assist you in being a power thinker. And the thing about power thinking is it's, it's contagious. When you, you walk into a room and you, you, you all know power thinkers, you know, people that they walk into a room and they light up the room and people gravitate toward them and want to be in their energy and want to hang out with them. And they make, they make, you know, they, they make things fun and, you know, and, you know, you don't have to be the party. You have to be the party in your own head for yourself. This is not about you being, you know, something that you're not, this is not about you being something you're not comfortable with. This is about you being a power thinker and a power thinker is an optimistic person who feels good about themselves, who understands they have shortcomings, who loves themselves unconditionally, who tries to see the glass as half full instead of half empty and tries to see the good in every situation, even when it's a tough one and feels strong and grateful to be here. That's a power thinker. All right, let's breathe. All right. So I wish I could play my, play my breath work songs, but I can't because you know, this goes on <clears throat> this goes on the podcast. So I hope you guys are following me on let go with Lucinda. Please go to my podcast and um, um, subscribe because it, it makes the podcast more successful. And I'm, I'm doing this for free and that for free. And I'm trying to help a lot of people. And um, I would love it if you would subscribe to let go with Lucinda. You can follow me on Facebook and you can follow me on Instagram, Lucinda Bassett Breathwork, um, Lucinda Bassett. And right now I'm going to find a song and we're going to do some breath work because I'd love to leave you guys feeling good. Okay. So I'd like you to close your eyes right now. And the idea is. You're going to close your eyes and you're going to breathe into the count of three and then a short breath out as though you're breathing on a mirror. So it's, yes, the strongest thing we could do is ask for help if we need it. And you're not alone. You've got me. If, if you're interested in coaching, by the way, um, all you got to do is call us or email Darla. And um, I'm doing coaching for a couple more weeks and I'm going to be on a trip myself. Um, Darla's number is 419 three, five, oh, seven, four, nine, nine. I can coach you on everything from relationships to anxiety and depression to figuring out what you want to do with your life. I'm pretty good at what I do. <laughs> and I do groups. I'm not going to be doing one though until probably October. So, um, let's breathe together. And I want you to close your eyes, breathing in to the count of three short breath out. And breath work's so important. You're oxygenizing your body, your brain, and your blood. It's one of the healthiest things you can do for your body is to do breath. And we're doing a breath work retreat in November. It will sell out Southern California. Um, and it's in this big, beautiful villa. Hopefully by then we'll have this Delta variant under control. Um, if you want to sign up and we can't do it, you'll get your money back, but it will sell out. We only have 16 people, gourmet food. Let's go into the breath work though. I call upon the masters of light and the I am presence and the angelic forces and everyone's higher self here present tonight to show everyone the beauty of their power, the uniqueness of their light. Um, one of my favorite quotes I keep on my desk I wish I could show you when you're lonely or in darkness, the astonishing light of your own being. That is your power. I am divine worthiness. I am good. I am radiating power and God energy. I am forgiving and forget forgiven. I release the past. I am loved and loving. I am as God created me. It's safe to breathe, safe to be in my body. All I need is here with me now. 
I accept my good. I am strong. I am worthy of great love. I call upon the great I am presence, masters of light and angelic forces to give everyone here tonight a clear and divine sign of their connection to the universe and their higher source. Breathing deeply stimulates our skin and our muscles and all the major organs in our body. Deep breathing strengthens the immune system and detoxifies our body. Fully connected breathing stimulates your brain, improving mental alertness and connecting you to a higher spiritual realm. It can address negative patterns or thoughts and behaviors, placing you in a higher frequency state, allowing you to release serotonin and endorphins organic chemicals that can produce a blissful euphoric state resulting in a deeper connection to God. I call upon the great I am to give everyone here any information or signs they may need to see or hear at this time. I am in perfect balance. I am loved and loving. I am enough. I am worthy. I am safe and secure. As you keep your breathing consistent, I ask you to come back into the space and wiggle, wiggle your fingers and your toes. You can open your eyes if you want. Take one last look at me as I sweat to death here. <laughs> I have a shirt on. I'm showing you the shirt. There it is. It's a butterfly. <laughs> uh, so come back into the room, into, I love it. Like place your hands on your thighs or because then you're grounding yourself, grounding your spiritual space to your earthly plane, knowing that you have everything you need to live the life you want to live. It's not about money and it's not about beauty and it's not about, you know, um, what other people think. It's about what you think. It's about how you get up every day, grateful to be here, grateful to have your life, grateful to have people who love you, grateful to feel passionate about something. Maybe you have a beautiful dog or maybe a wonderful boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever. And good, you're in good health. And just stay in gratitude. People ask me, how are you so happy all the time, Lucinda? And I'm here to tell you right now that a lar large part of my happiness and my power comes from my passion for life and the gratitude that I experience every day just, just to be here. Um, at all. All right. I wish you all an incredible week and uh, we're going to see you in, in two weeks from now. I want to look at the calendar so I can give you that date. Ah, does anybody have that date in the top of their head? I should have it. I've got too many things on my phone. All right. So two weeks from now is um, the 17th. Oh my gosh. That sounds so far away, doesn't it? <laughs> So I will see you here on the 17th to talk about narcissism. And it's a very powerful subject. I think everybody needs to understand uh, what a narcissist is and how, how, they, how they, excuse me, treat others. Until then, I hope you'll go out and make it a great week to be you. And remember to stay in, stay in your power because you have such incredible power and um, such an honor for me to be here. And I hope I'll see you two weeks from now. Until then, follow me on Let Go With Lucinda, the podcast, on every podcast platform. If you missed any of these Zoom calls, they're on there. You can find me on YouTube. And uh, again, call Darla at 419-350-7499 if you'd like to schedule, schedule some coaching 
Um, if you would like a free copy of our new program that's coming out hopefully in November, um, you should jump on that. Um, email us your email address at Darla, D-A-R-L-A dot Van Horn, V-A-N-H-O-R-N at gmail.com. And we are going to gift you. You'll be one of the first people to get the new program, um, which is going to be called From Panic to Power, The Solution. And it's going to have so many great things. We're really excited about it. So until next time, go make it a great week to be you, great two weeks to be you. And I'll see you soon. Bye.